All right, I'm going to continue talking about how Pan's Labyrinth is a metaphor for the Spanish society under Vidal. Um, here I'm going to look at the characters employed and what they symbolise and why they're relevant to um, the period of, of Spanish history in which uh, Vidal was reigning over Spain. Um, in one of my um, other videos, um, in which I talked about the critique of the Franco regime, I talked a lot about Vidal as being as personifying the regime and what it all stood for. Uh, I don't think we really need to go into a great deal more about that, but if you haven't watched that video yet, I suggest you do. But also, it's just basically talking about his authoritarian nature, the lack of um, flexibility, his rigour, his demanding of unquestioning obedience, his cruelty, all facets of the Franco regime. Something I didn't mention in the critique of the regime, which arguably would have been a valid point, but I'm going to talk about it now, is his treatment of women. Um, this, again, is symbolic of the regime under Franco. The, within Franco's regime, the women had an important role to some extent. They were seen as being the centre of the family. Now, the family conjunct, the family construct, was seen as very important. Obviously, this is a very traditional, very conservative Catholic era uh, of Spain, in which the, the families were supposed to stay together, in which uh, divorce um, was basically almost almost uh, unacceptable, uh, in which abortion obviously was um, was illegal. Uh, in this kind of Franco Spain, the women are very much central to the running of the home, but this is where their importance lay, and in no other area. Uh, and again, this is uh, this is what kind of Vidal assumes the women under him will do. They will all obey him but they have their, their jobs around the house. Um, we see Mercedes in charge of the cooking, the general upkeep of the house. We see the, the, two, uh, the two or three women who, again, whose role it is to prepare the food. Uh, the way he treats Carmen is very much as someone uh, inferior to him who is almost there just to be the vessel through which his baby is born, thereby preserving his family name. Um, and this is very much the way that the women were seen under Franco. Um, there's lots of very uh, good examples of how Vidal sees women. Um, for example, we talk about his role with Carmen uh, and the role of the wife within within Spanish the Spanish society. Um, it all, almost all times, Vidal uh, dominates the relationship. From the very moment she arrives, he almost insists that she sits in the wheelchair. Uh, the way he says it, "Do it for me," it's "Hazlo por mí." It's a very, it's a very demanding. It's not a particularly out of love. It seems more like he's coercing her rather than forcing her, rather than suggesting she does it. Uh, another example is during the dinner party, where Carmen is explaining how to the the ladies in the village how she got to know Vidal. Vidal is very rude towards her. It's almost like he can't be bothered with his tittle tattle. He's almost arguably ashamed, possibly of the way that their relationship has developed. Uh, so he shuts her up, makes her look uh, extremely foolish in their eyes. Um, you know, he, he kind of insists, the doctor says, after do he does show a little bit of affection, he says, you know, try and cure her after a hemorrhage. But when it's clear that there is a risk towards the baby's life, Vidal says, save the baby. If it comes down to it, save the baby, not the wife. Um, again, showing the, the scant importance of love within his life. Um, Carmen is there as the mother of his child and nothing else. Um, the only time where he does seed... Um, uh, kind of rights within within the family is when he allows um, Carmen to tell off Ophelia about the mandrake root that's lying under her bed. Again, this is probably relevant because it's more of a family issue. It's telling off a daughter. He wasn't bothered about it. So Ophelia is basically irrelevant for him. Um, in terms of in terms of his relationship with Mercedes. Again, Mercedes is very much the maid, she's the servant, she's the cook, she's someone who he believes is incapable of intelligence and incapable of thought. Um, this is how Mercedes gets away with her spying on him. There's one scene early in the film where Vidal is discussing troop movements with, um, with his two lieutenants, Garces and Serrano, and Mercedes is there just blatantly spying on him. She, he almost doesn't even consider her to, to be valid of suspicion. Um, it's only really when things become evident with the key of the granary, uh, the key being unlocked, um, the uh, the you know the clues that he has that he suddenly even thinks that Mercedes might be capable of this deceit towards him. 
Uh, he admits as much when he's about to torture her shortly before she escapes. He says, you've discovered the source of my, of my biggest fault, la soberbia, pride. Um, the fact that he didn't even consider women to be capable of, of, of actions against him. So this kind of machista attitude, this chauvinistic, sexist attitude, is, is very kind of part of uh, the critique of the Spanish society under, under Franco. If you continue to talk about Carmen, now Carmen symbolises the, the, uh, the passivity of, of the Spanish nation against Franco. Now, Franco didn't have total support by any means within, uh, within the regime, within the dictatorship. He did have a lot, but he didn't have everyone's support. There were many people who were either too afraid uh, of him or, or simply uh, weren't prepared to fight against it, were prepared to meekly go along to appease the regime. And Carmen very much represents this. She, she's a very weak character as, as portrayed by her kind of sickly ill nature. She almost represents Spain itself, that kind of a weak, sickly nation, unable to fight or defend itself against the authoritarianism of, of Vidal and Franco. Um, in all aspects, she tries, to, uh, she tries to force Ophelia to accept the reality of the situation, to, uh, to almost accept the fact that uh, Vidal is and Franco Spain is the correct force. She insists that that Ophelia calls him father, even though he is only a stepfather. This is something Ophelia obviously refused to, refuses to do. But the mother tries to get him to tries to get her to to uh, respect him in this way, which is almost asking for the obedience towards the regime. Also, her insistence that that Ophelia should stop reading fairy stories, that she shouldn't believe in magic. Um, it's almost like saying, look, you, you have to accept that there is no chance of escape. This is the regime that exists. You must accept this. We see this both in the car at the very start of the film, when she says, aren't you too old for these fairy tales? And also, again, when she finds the mandrake root, she says, magic doesn't exist, nor for you, not for me, not for anyone. It's almost like saying, you can't escape. You can't go down this fancy world. There's no point in resisting. Except what's real. Um... And Carmen sets the example, you know, she, uh, as we've said about Vidal, she accepts Vidal's orders at almost every time. Um, she's come in a clearly a state of illness uh, to be with him. He said that a, a child should be born where his father is, is, again, showing his scant concern for her well-being, for her health. Um, and Carmen really is a very weak, very passive, uh, very tragic, pathetic figure. Um, without any real bravery, any um, any backbone, any, and and she's almost like this kind of meek acceptance of the way things are, um, and that's what kind of um, Del Toro uses Carmen for to symbolise this this sad acceptance of authoritarianism, and how this this can only lead to a tragic end, uh, to be used by the regime's own devices for self perpetuation. Mercedes is very much the anti-Carmen. She is the other side. She is the other female example. She's the other example that Ophelia has about how she should live her life, how she should do things. Despite Mercedes claiming to be a, a coward when she talks to, to Pedro, she is anything but. She is very much almost the centre of the, of the resistance against Fidel, whether it's giving Pedro the key to the granary, whether it's passing on messages, whether it's taking Dr. Ferreiro to the... To the, um, to the rebels so that Frances's leg can be amputated. She's extremely brave. Everything she does is very selfless. Um, and it's, she, she shows, I think Del Toro uses Mercedes to show that despite the dangers inherent, despite the, the fact that she may be weak, she's only one person, she's a woman, you know, not particularly strong. Again, authoritarians can be stood up to, for. Um, and Mercedes very much symbolises this important message. Um, she's also the one that gives a lot of good advice to Ophelia. She very much acts as a, as a very maternal figure. Um, don't trust in fawns. Uh, I used to believe in fairies. Um, she looks after her when, when, um, um, when the mother's had a hemorrhage. Again, she's there as, as an example to follow uh, for Ophelia and an example for, for people to follow against authoritarianism. So Mercedes is, is a very key figure uh, in the film for this reason. Um, Ophelia um, really is the choice of the Spanish people. I think that's where, where Ophelia kind of sits within the, the importance symbolically. 
Um, she is the, the, the person deciding which path to take. Ophelia is, is at a crossroads in her life as symbolised by the book. She's between adulthood and childhood and she's deciding what, what she should do. And she has the, the example of her mother, the example of Mercedes to follow. And obviously, as she is a hero, as she is the, the protagonist in the story, as she um, does have you know, a very uh, a clear sense of morality, she follows Mercedes' path towards fighting against the monstrosity that is Vidal, and therefore the monstrosity that is authoritarianism and the, uh, the Franco regime. Um, the baby. The baby is almost like the future of Spain. Um, I think that Vidal is very is insistent that his name be continued. That's one of the things that he's most keen to keen to stress. When he's about to die, when he's shot by Pedro, the thing that he wants to pass on is tell him who his father was, tell him how he died. Um, this is the key thing, and again, it's important to realise that that many regimes, that one of their main interests is to is to self propagate, to continue their regime, and this is what really Vidal's trying to do. You could you can see the film as almost a struggle for the future of the baby, and therefore as a future for Spain. Uh, if Ophelia managed to take it away, um, if the rebels eventually, as they do, get the hold of him, it's almost like the future of Spain will be assured. He'll be brought up along the right lines, knowing what's right and wrong. Whereas if Vidal can, uh, you know, has his way, he'll just be another another kind of uh, pawn brought up within the this this kind of wrong ideology, this kind of very uh, authoritarian ideology. So that's really what the baby the baby represents. The fact that Ophelia is not prepared to sacrifice even a drop of blood for the future of Spain or someone innocent uh, again shows this. She's not prepared prepared to sacrifice the the future of Spain for this. Another key figure within the, the film is Dr. Ferrero. Ferrero is the kind of wavering figure. At the start of the film, he seems like someone who's appe appeasing Vidal. He seems to be afraid of acting. Um, he seems to be uh, too afraid to do anything against it. But again, his, his morals are kind of turned as the film goes on. Um, you often have this kind of figure within, within, uh, within a fairy tale. The, the, the figure that isn't sure what to do, takes a proper stand, but dies for his cause. Um, but, again, through his kind of sacrifice, um, you know, the story, you know, does reach a kind of a happy ending one way or another. In the final uh, talk I'm going to do about about this, the, the talk of the kind of metaphor of, of, of the film being Critique of Spain, I'm going to be looking at, at the, the more fantastical uh, creatures. I'm going to talk about the frog, I'm going to talk about the tree, the frog's living in, I'm going to talk about the pale man, to some extent the fall, and actually the underground kingdom as a whole. And also referring a little bit to the the uh, story that Ophelia talks, uh, tells to her brother um, about the rose that can convey um, immortality. But hopefully that's kind of shown you about what the various characters represent uh, in terms of a critique of the Spanish society under Franco.